Hello and welcome to Empowering Wives. If you are a wife and you find yourself facing infidelity in your marriage and you're looking for resolution, tips or strategies to fight for your marriage, but you want to avoid making this an idol, then you are in the right place. That's honey. <laughs> is week two of our 12 weeks or 90 days nurturing your spirit challenge. In this video, we are going to be discussing the discipline of fasting. Now, I know you guys are, are familiar with fasting in terms of, again, looking for something, getting what you want from the Lord, but we want to look at fasting a little bit closer and we want to build a foundation so you can understand fasting better. Fasting for spiritual purposes is turning away your plate for a period of time to seek the Lord. Fasting combined with prayer can be used to wage effective warfare. Fasting also is a way to declutter your mind and your spirit and position you to hear from the Lord. Fasting makes you more spiritual sensitive. Fasting helps keep you in the position of being able to be effective in anything that you're doing as it opposed to as, as it concerns the spiritual realm. Now, fasting causes your spirit to become stronger and your flesh weaker. It gives way for the fruits of the spirit to be manifested in your life. The scripture says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. If you are facing infidelity in your marriage, one of the, one of the most important things that you're going to need is the fruit of the spirit. There are definite spiritual purposes for fasting. So it is important that you understand these. For if you are fasting for the wrong reasons, you will be ineffective and frustrated. So we're gonna be talking about just a couple of things that fasting helps with. For one, humble yourself. The Bible says, humble yourself before the mighty hand of God that he may lift you up. So a way to humble yourself is through fasting. Fasting is another tool that helps when you're repenting of sin. A fast of repentance is to deal with when you know you have sinned and you want to turn back to God. Actually in Joel 2 and 12, it says, even now declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, weeping, and mourning. So ask yourself, have you turned your heart away from the Lord, whatever whatever reason, being that you being frustrated, just having a hard time in life, you feel disappointed in God. If you have turned your heart from the Lord, fasting is a way that you can get back in your spiritual position. Another way, another thing that fasting helps with is with revelation. If you want revelation, if you need, actually, we all need revelation. It's not even a want situation. We need to turn to fasting for revelation. In Daniel 9 and 2, in the first year of his reign, Daniel understood from scripture according to the word that the Lord has given to Jeremiah the prophet, the desolation of Jerusalem would last 70 years. However, Daniel was wanting to know, like, what's happening? This is this, this still going on. So it was during that time Daniel was fasting that he got the revelation how long the desolation of Jerusalem would last. When you need knowledge and you need, you need information, you want to turn to fasting, right? So you're always asking yourself, Lord, why is this? Why is this happening to me? You know, or you may be in a position where you're trying to figure out how to, how, how, what do I need to do from here? What do I do, need to do now? You want to turn your heart back to the Lord through fasting 
right? So that he can reveal to you your next step, give you guidance, you know, so you can know what you need to do, especially in difficult times, okay? Now, we understand, here is the thing about fasting, you guys, and just like prayer, um, fasting is such a powerful spiritual tool, right? It's a tool that we have actually been commanded to do when you fast, right? So, we want to learn and understand fasting so that we can grow closer in our relationship with the Lord so that our, we can be more spiritually sensitive to hear from him. I know that a lot of people tell me, Meltoria, you know, I don't hear from the Lord like that. Listen here, fast, you can use fasting to be heard of the Lord. And we see this in 2 Samuel 12 and 16. David pleaded with God because his, you know, child was sick and he was pleading for the Lord. And the Lord heard him. You know, he came to the Lord through fasting and the Lord heard him and he spoke to him. He spoke to David and even though David was, was, in a, was in a bad place with the Lord, he still was able to make an audience with the Lord through fasting, right? In Jonah 3 and 5, the Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed and all of them from the greatest to the least, put on a sackcloth. Now we know the children of Ish, the, the 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 Ninevites, right, or the people from Nineveh, they were in a backslidden position, and Jonah went and gave them a warning. And so they wanted to, hey, seek the Lord. They wanted to turn their hearts back to, to the Lord. So they did through they did so through fasting. Now, you guys, I want to just tell you guys some tips to help you on your journey of fasting. Some of you may have fasted before. Many of you may have attempted fasting before and just really never had success in fasting. There are a couple of things you want to remember when you're fasting. You have to set your heart, right? You have to set your mind. I know a lot of people feel as if, hey, I'm going through something today, so tomorrow I'm going to, going to go on a fast. Personally, that never really worked for me. So I always tell people that, hey, set your heart to fast. For example, if you, you may be having a rough time, a rough season, you want to say, hey, you know what? Um, at the end of the month, I am going to do a fast. You want to decide what type of fast that you're going to do. You want to say, hey, I'm going to be fasting for this purpose. I want to hear from the Lord. I want to position myself so that, the, that, that you know, I could be more sensitive to what God is doing in my life. So you can set your heart to a fast. Another thing you want to do is, is particular, you guys, I always tell people this. Let me tell you something. You want to fast according to the guidelines of the scripture. You might not know, fasting is a spiritual discipline, but it's not only confined to Christianity. So if you are a believer and, you know, you find you want to fast, this is not something that is sacred to Christianity. There are different religions out religions out there and they fast, okay? So you, you wanna make sure that when you're fasting, you are using the guidelines according to what is laid out in the scripture to fast. Now, you know, we into 2024 and folks be like, you know, they fasting from social media, they fasting from movies they fast like look here let me tell you something personally i don't know i can't say that this is wrong and i can't say this is right but as a believer as a kingdom citizen i want to make sure that whatever i do i am doing it according to the manual which is the scripture so the scripture, you guys, we can use as a tool to give reference to. So if we want to know how to be effective at fasting, we want to go to the guidelines of the scripture and see how it was done. Now, even though, you know, some people say, but they didn't have internet back then. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things that they didn't have back then that we do have now. And of course, you use wisdom. There, there is just some things that we just have to stick to, right? And we just have to stick to the guide that, that guidelines that are later in the scripture. So again, you guys, if you have already found that, hey, I haven't been having success in fasting, try again. Do it again. It's going to take discipline. It's going to take a made up mind to, you know, be successful in the discipline of fasting. But you can do it. Let me tell you something. 
you know, from the time there have been a couple of people that I've worked with, believe us, they say, Meltaria, you know, I've been fasting for, you know, a couple of years and I never was successful. But after I gave them, you know, tips and tools and strategies, they were able to be successful in their time of fasting. Have you ever heard the saying, if you are ready, you don't have to get ready? Well, here is the thing. When many of us were faced with the issue of infidelity in our marriage, we were not ready. Okay? We were not ready. Anybody wasn't ready? I mean, personally, I wasn't ready. Okay? So because I wasn't ready, because we're not ready, we have to get ready. We have to get ready to be able to handle the things that we're going to have to go through in this journey of fighting for your marriage. And fasting is a discipline that you're going to need to help get your spirit ready. So I want you to commit to doing that. And even as we're, you know, on this journey of nurturing the spirit, listen here, take, take time and, 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 and decide that you're going to commit to fasting. Now, another thing that I, you know, would um, advise you to do is not only set time for fasting for your marriage, because, you know, we want to focus more on nurturing the spirit. So it's more about turning the plate so that you can draw closer to the Lord. You want to hear from the Lord. You want to see what God wants you to do. Because let me tell you something, if you're find, finding yourself in this issue dealing with infidelity in your marriage, I'm telling you the enemy knows something that you don't. Okay, the enemy knows that you are a force to be reckoned with. He knows that you are a powerhouse. He knows that if you realize who you are as, as, a, as a kingdom citizen, if you recognize your power, he knows that you're going to be in trouble. And so, and so, yeah, I know you may be like, oh, fasting, like, oh, not again. But listen here, just time to, you know, re renew your mindset, renew your thinking about it, and now approach it from a different perspective. Rather than say, hey, I'm fasting because I need, you know, a bill paid. I'm fasting because I need, you know, the Lord to come and intervene in this hot trouble that I'm in, or I need to, to fast because I need the Lord to, to move and talk to my husband. No, fast because say, God, I just want to know you. I want to hear you. I want to be in your presence. Lord, just, just fast because say, God, I just want to be shaped and I want to be molded in the image of your dear son. I, I'm just fasting because I want to renew it mind. I want to renew it heart. Listen, to, I'm hurt. I'm broken. Listen, to, I need healing. I need direction. Fast because you're submitting to God. You're submitting to the will of God. So even as you go on this journey of nurturing your spirit, let this time of fasting be a fast committed to nurturing your spirit, growing your spirit man so that you can be able to handle whatever the enemy has to throw at you during the season. I remember during the time that I was going through in my marriage, let me tell you all something. I spent some time fasting right? But lesson here, I spent more time thinking about what to don't eat, you know, thinking about what I can't eat, you know, because I was doing like Daniel fast, corporate fasting. So it was all about my focus and my direction. It was not in the right place. But there was a time I remember back in about 2013, you know, when I, y'all hear me say, Lord, if you can't fix this, this cannot be fixed and I will be okay with it. So this was a time that I said that and I, I heard the spirit of the Lord leading me to a fast and it was a 40 day fast. And even though I had done 40 day fasting before, I believe that this was the most significant fast that I have done at the time because I wasn't thinking about, you know, what I was going to eat. And what I wasn't going to eat, what I was going to do, what I did was, because I knew I was going on a fast, I had set my heart on a date. I said, okay, I think it was like October. So I said, hey, you know, beginning October 1st, I'm going to go on a 40-day fast. So I already had my time set. I already knew I I I did this um this like fasting. I call it a fasting tracker, you guys. I put 40 squares 
on a sheet of paper, day one, day two, day three, to day 40. And every day that I completed the fast, I exited out. You know, I, I don't know, this was helping me to motivate, you know, keeping me motivated to stay on track. You know, whatever you got to do to, to motivate yourself, hey, do it. But I I found that that helped me a lot. So every day I would, you know, tick off what I was going to do. I had already, un I already knew what type of fasting that I was going to do. So even before that, I think during that time, I did like the first week of, of uh, a absolute fast. So I just drank water or something like that. And then um, 14 days into the fast, you know, it, it was like, like I, I transitioned from just liquids to, I think it was fruits and vegetables, something like that. I don't remember. It was a couple of years ago. But I had already mapped out what I was going to do in the fast. I already knew that during the fast, not only was I turning away my plate, but now I was going to be feeding myself on God's word. So I already had like a reading plan that I was going to do during that time of fasting. So you guys, when you when you are fasting, you start getting those hunger pangs. Instead of worrying about, hey, I'm hungry and I can't eat, no, go to the word. Instead of saying, hey, oh, I can't fast this time. You know, y'all know how them hunger pangs sit in. Y'all know they kick in when, when the body say, hey, what's going on here? So instead of me worrying about that or even giving that focus or attention, I would just get into the word or I would put on some worship music. I would start, you know, cleaning up around the house, just not focus on the pain. And y'all know them headaches. Y'all know them headaches kick in when we are fasting. Instead of me focus on the, the pain of the headache, again, I already had my material. I had reading material that, you know, even that I was doing at that time, it wasn't always the scripture that I went to. Sometimes it was just like a, a, a Christian text or book or something like that to keep me occupied. Because when you're going through fasting, the reason why you don't be able to make it is because when the body starts sending out those signals and trying to get your attention, you know, trying to tug on you like a kid tugging on their mom's clothes, you know, they're trying to tug on you and say, hey, what's going on up there? You, you, you begin to think on it. You begin to dwell on it. You begin to focus on it. And then you found like, oh, I can't take it no more. Then you're going to, you know, you break your fast. Okay. So no, you don't have to do that. All you have to do is grab something else, right? You're, you're, when that hunger pain sitting, grab, listen here, go and get a copy of my newly released uh, uh, ebook, right? I just did an ebook on prayer. So make sure you guys go and get a copy of that. I'm going to link, link the, the description in the, uh, I'm going to link the way to purchase in the description. So make sure you get a copy of that. And if you haven't watched my video on fasting, um, prayer, nurturing your spirit, make sure you do that. This is the second week. That is week one that I dealt with, with, with prayer. Week one, I dealt with prayer. This week, I'm dealing with fasting. So make sure you get a copy of my ebook on that. You guys, again, the reason why I'm doing this, I want to give you another perspective on these spiritual disciplines to help you to grow and nurture your spirit. And it's with a strong spirit that you're going to be able to handle anything that the enemy is throwing. In, um, at you during this time as you're fighting for your marriage. And this is not just for the season for fighting for your marriage. I believe that, listen, here, when you grow, you know, you can't like, you know, go back to when you, when you, when you, when you become mature, I don't think that you could go immature again. It's just up from here, you know, glory to glory. Like you can't become an adult and then, you know, all of a sudden become a toddler again, right? I mean, if you're in the right mind and health and healing, everything is in place. But this, this is going to be long lasting, you guys. When you develop and nurture your spirit, it's going to be long lasting. It's going to be up from here. And so I hope that you guys are committed to the work and doing the things that, you know, I'm, I'm talking about here in these short videos. Again, you guys, make sure you go and purchase a copy of my newly released ebook. It's guys, thank you for tuning in to this um, we're focused on fasting. I hope now that even if you have been fasting before, it give you a better insight, it give you another 
a better strategy on how to approach fasting, how to see fasting. But let me know if this in the chat that this is, this has been a help to you. Let me know. Let me know. And so y'all be on the lookout, you guys. I have more videos coming talking about fasting. So I hope you guys be blessed. Thank you.